And now for our weekly news segment. Okay, you got links. Let's let's just uh, let's combine this with the viewers on stage. You want to bring everybody up, Sunita? Okay. Anybody that wants to come up now is the time. We'll talk about CCS stuff. Maybe some other news news items. We'll go through right. first. Okay. It's the viewers on stage segment. It's that time where we invite you, the viewers, up on stage to comment on anything you've heard so far today, ask the guest a question, or maybe talk about one of the news topics. Come on down. Right, all right, all right. Guys, jump on up. Now's the time if you want to talk about the Monero CCS hack. All right. All right. I see people jumping on. Nice, 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 nice. What's going on, guys? Sunita, is there any um, any non Monero CCS news that we want to mention first? Um, if you see in those links, I don't know what, what we got up there. And I'm trying to non on my computer. This was. The... Oh, you could uh, bring up bring up. Oh, the the meetup. We can do that maybe. Yeah, go ahead. Show that. Oh wait, not that one. Where is it? Meetup here it is. Is that the meetup? Oh no, it's sharing. Share this tab. The Chicago Monero meetup that was just that just happened this past Thursday. Looks like they all had a great time. Pretty successful. Yeah, that, like that was a big success. I think Vic said there were like fifty people there. Super cool. Uh unfortunately we weren't able to go. Womp womp. Make it. I know. It looks great. Looks like we had a nice turnout. That's girl gone crypto, right? On the left? Yeah, she went. It's awesome. That's cool. That's cool. It's nice to see. See Justin over there. Yeah. Some other familiar faces. Um, and yeah, I don't know what they gave their present what the presentations were on. Uh, I know Justin presented. And uh would love love to see that. So Justin hopefully Berman. they'll post those soon. That's their wallet thinking. Yeah. Um, those are the pictures that they shared. I'm assuming yeah. they have more. Yeah, I think Justin presented on uh, what we were just talking about, actually, I believe. Seraphis related yeah. stuff. And I think maybe full membership proofs, which is which is super cool. Um, okay. all right, let's let's get into the Monero CCS though. I know we have other news, but let's just talk okay. about we'll talk about um stop wasting everybody's time here because I think everybody's waiting to talk about that. Um so guys, you want to show first? Yeah, who do we got on stage here? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello. You know, how's it going, man? You know, life is good over here because I don't have my crypto on a Windows machine. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you can you can leave this open. this one, right? Yeah, wallet incident. Okay. So I'll ask you now. What's what's your take? Given everything that's that's happened, what are you what are you thinking about this whole situation? We'll see how good David is at not interrupting, but. Um, my take is for one, um, just because we have some incredible modern iterations on ways to be your own banker and stuff, there's a lot of reasons why we shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I proposed about three years ago um, that all open source software technologies, you know, Monero included, um, they have, it's not even so much that there's not enough funding. It's that certain projects steal the spotlight and other projects that could be funded with a couple hundred dollars in a day. They have nowhere to go to request like $200 or something like that. And these are things that hundreds and hundreds of other dependencies could benefit from. So I floated a while ago, you should have two or three or maybe even four open source software foundations and those uh, I, actually the the magic monero fund that luke and those other guys are doing are like right on par with what it is that i'm i'm describing but basically you have trusted elements within the community that are operating under fiduciary law and transparency laws um and and you could fund all kinds of open source software projects um, and then the second side to that is whenever you build a trust, you try to make it where it's generating its own revenue, right? With diversified assets 
under management. So for example, like maybe it owns 2% of a mining company or, and it's getting paid dividends and you just make a point to have a self-sufficient open source software funding machine. That, that was the entire idea behind get graphene OS or, I mean, I got a couple of companies that I literally only built them to provide a consistent revenue stream for things like open source software. Um, but those two ideas would merge together really well, much better than just a couple of people holding a wallet. You know, like it, that's, that is such an old way of doing things like from just a knowledge of banking perspective, it was, this was destined to happen. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about the incident first before we get into um, moving forward, what we should be doing, different ways of raising money. What what do you think about just the hack itself? What went down? What's your take on that? How they were how they were running? I'm, I'm like an inherently very skeptical person. Like, how could, how do I even know that you know that is in fact the way that the wallets were kept? How do I even know that there's not five or six Luigi's or what you know? To me, they're just people on a computer screen that I've seen in you know. Well, not in this case, but you know. It's people on the internet that have like done a, a, a yeah. video with somebody or whatever. And very few people even have the time to audit things like view keys and all of that. Um, and it's, it's, so it's hard for us to even know what actually happened, right? And it's hard for us to know that if they were in fact storing them in the ways that they say, or if other things happened with, you know, when Fluffy Pony was being attacked by the government right like we don't really know all of the players involved if there's this, like some secret gag order if maybe you know luigi's been compromised in some sort of way where they have like his daughter hostage i don't know you know <laughs> yeah i guess the bottom line is 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 we don't we don't know random x explorer what's going on You there, Random X Explorer. What an awesome name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? Shortwave Surfer, you want to chime in? What you, would you think about the, the, the yeah. hack itself before we get into what should be done to, to fix the situation moving forward? When I saw that, my first, uh, when I first saw the, the, the number, my first thought was, ouch, that has to hurt. Um, the fact that he was using a Windows machine at all, um, I think that was probably the biggest problem. Um, the Ubuntu part was a bit of a problem because he had it, I guess he had it online from what I understand. But the fact that he was using a Windows machine as a hot wallet, like he was using the Linux machine to hold the main thing, and then he was transferring funds to a hot wallet on the Windows machine. And I mean, using Windows in a circumstance like this is just not a good thing. Because when Lord only knows what's in Windows, we don't know because it's proprietary. You can't pick apart all that code. What do you, you know, guys think one, about you know the fact okay. that uh, it was Luigi and Fluffy Pony that had access to these seeds? Um, what, what, what's your, what's your take on that? I mean, I I, I saw both oh. the same guys. <laughs> oh, they just don't have icons. <laughs> I saw Fluffy getting attacked brutally on Twitter, uh, which was, I think, unfortunate to see, given all the work this guy has done for the community. People just assuming the worst without any evidence. Um, but yeah, fact is, these guys did ha did know what the seed phrase was. Just curious what, what people are thinking about that. Hey, guys. Sorry, I had to take care of the fire in the house. Uh, question, um, do we actually know how the hack happened? So I, when I read it, I, I understand that actually this is still unclear. Uh, yeah, no, we, 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 don't, we don't know. We just know that the, the coins were, were swept, right? Somebody had access to the private key and somebody used that to essentially create a wallet with private key. Uh, oh, we have Andres as well. well. We'll get to that part of the story. Why I am not hearing anything. Sorry. Wait. You can't hear us? 
I don't know. Um, let's let's continue to talk about yeah, like that, what the hack and what people think about the setup that was being used. Uh, the fact that two members of the community had access to the seed phrase. What are you guys thinking about this? So I just want to point out, like, so I've been into, like, not so much digital security, but just security in general for a really long time. And the thing is, is, like, when people jump to conclusions about the things that they do actually know, well, the thing is, is, like, either one of these guys could, you know, they probably have friends coming and going. Those people probably already know about XMR. And the thing is, is like any one of those friends in some kind of bad relationship or whatever may have just been like, yeah, I'm going to take I'm going to take all the Monero out of this wallet. There doesn't even like the hack could have been just somebody had access to one of their computers. Right. You know, like we have no idea right now. Yeah, it could. Have, right. Which is why, yeah, moving forward, we may need to do things like, yeah, like utilizing multi-sig. Right. Um, so it can't just be one guy with the seed that can be compromised. Um, Suni, do you want to bring up the blog post that Justin put up where he's he's been and Blin? Don't forget Blin. Blin, Blin was part of that. No, add Blin. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could you could bring up other people that are in the backstage, Sunita. Oh, wait, did Sunita go away? I think she went away. Andres, what's going on, man? <laughs> she had enough. Uh, everything's good. How are you? Good, man. Thank you. I'm actually a bit delayed because I was walking uh, to my house on time <laughs> to appear here. And I got interrupted by um, basically one of the presidential candidates that we have. In Argentina, suddenly it was a rally, like ten blocks from my home, and all the all the streets were closed. <laughs> I had to take a big um, thing around. But yeah, uh, such a sad thing what happened with the CCS, and we don't know anything about it. So, well, yeah, I mean, uh, how how do you? I guess the first question I've been asking everybody, I mean, how do you feel about the, the hack itself? It's, uh, I mean, it's one of those things that we know so little about it that it's just jumping into conclusions. I'm not saying that we won't know um, in the future, but it could be from the easiest and most stupid and obvious and really bad explanation which is someone just sto stolen the, the CCS money. One of the custodians, we don't know. Uh, I tend to wear on the side of that everybody is a good person, not a bad person. So I don't think it's fair after all the, um, all, all, all what, I don't know, Fluffy, for example, has done through the years or, or Luigi handling the CCS money for so many years. It's all of a the sudden they turn evil and exit scam everybody so that's not fair i think unless you have any proof on the other side the details about how the security was handled are kind of weird or you would uh, you would assume that um, people like are very hardcore monero from the <laughs> oceans have like the best security setup ever for su such kind of fans and it looks like it wasn't the case so a, a bit of negligence there but at the same time there is i mean there's so much you can do because if you do like the perfect security setup it's basically un unstable uh, you cannot use it it's just th those are funds that need to be first gathered and then you need to be able to transfer them on kind of a regular basis it's not like a really uh, cold wallet you need to pay people that do work for the ccs so from time to time you you are bound to be exposed and and i think it's one of those uh, places when you can see some of the little things that are still not totally ironed out in monero for example multi-sig is I, i'm not even sure that if multi-sig works properly or it's just too cumbersome to use 
but basically nobody uses multisig in Monero. Yeah, Almost nobody right now supposedly have a, a, a solution right now for enterprises. I haven't tried it yet, uh, but that's that's something. On the other side, you have hardware wallets. Uh, we don't have a, like a native open source hardware wallet for Monero, so you're it's more secure towards some kind of attacks, but at the same time, you are trusting the the code, uh, the security element of Ledger or the code uh, from Trezor. And it's been known that if you have a phys physical access to the Trezor, also you can get compromised. So there's no perfect solution. Uh, what I do think is that it's a very expensive learning <laughs> learning opportunity, very expensive, but maybe we can design a better CCS. Uh, my opinion is not that we don't need a CCS, uh, but we we can make it better. Uh, in the case of, for example, Monerujo, we already done our own funding system that is totally based on CCS and the work that somebody else did as well. I know that not everybody can do that because you need some kind of uh, prestige of in the community to trust you that you're actually going to do what, whatever you, you ask you ask the people funds uh, to do. But eh, the goal of Monero is always decentralized. So if we can decentralize a bit more the security of the CCS, if we can decentralize opportunities for funding like the Banti system that that um, that we have that Seth, I think, set up, decentralizing stuff more and more. But I think it's sad. I say I think it's sad. I think it's sad that we lost so much money <laughs> in the meantime. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I had money in there that was waiting to be collected from the CCS that I did year, years started years ago, and I've been I've been waiting to basically submit at a time when I thought I had achieved enough, uh, which I certainly think I have. Yeah, me too. Yes. But I, you know, that, that money's gone now. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I was relying on it. It's something that gave me the motivation to do everything I did and take all the risks that I've taken along the way. No. I, with that. I, I heard discussion that they might take money now from the general fund, right? And use that to pay out CCSs. That were stagnant, that didn't get paid out for the back capital. Yeah, of course, of course, I'm an interesting party in the whole thing because I am also in the middle of a, a CCS project. Uh, I was just weeks ago from collecting my first payment of the whole thing that I've written for the Monero Garden project. So, of course, I'm an interesting party. Uh, but for what I've read, yeah, the ongoing projects would be funded through the, the general fund. And I think it's it's the right move, uh, considering how much how much uh, money that implies compared to how much they are in the, there is in the general fund, which is basically a general fund. The, the, the usage of those funds are always up to discussion, you know? It's not like, oh, they were meant for something else than development around Monero that is supposed to be go through the CCS. So it's unfortunate, but I don't think it's a, it's a big issue for now. But looking forward, I'm already seeing, I can imagine a lot of discussion about how we, 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 are, we are going to do this in the future. Because I'm, I'm with, with, with total reason, I mean, uh, people are not just going to to, okay, let's donate to the next CCS and let's just handle the security the same way and let's have the same people. Um, it's, it's just not, not, not going to happen, in, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my opinion is, because I, I see a lot of people talking about, like, you know, we should do this, we should do that. Anybody that has any ideas should just kind of go go off and, and start it, right? Like, the the what's the one that Justin started? The Magic Crypto Fund. Um he went ahead and started a, another way to 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 raise money for quote unquote community projects. Uh, Kuno exists, you know that was just created by Anarchio, uh, and it's it's gaining organic adoption. Is it necessarily the best tool to use for these purposes? I don't know, but it does it does fit some niche. It's a super easy way to get up and running. There's no gatekeepers with Kuno. You don't have to submit a proposal and then um, for that, you know, wait for that 
proposal to get accepted or not. There's really there there really are no gatekeepers. Anybody can throw something on there, but that comes with you know cons as well, right? Because now anybody could put a proposal up there that hasn't been vetted in any way. I think that's really what the Monero CCS offered more than anything else was this vetting process where you had core kind of picking and choosing what they saw as being projects worthy of receiving funding so they kind of yeah are gatekeepers for better not worse i'd say right i think some gatekeep some gatekeeping is good or you know there's all different versions you, you the, the, the kuno thing still exists so if you don't want to go if you don't want to go the 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 route of like a monero type ccs you could always use something like a kuno but I, I guess my, 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 my point is, I think we just need to see people take initiative. And if they want to see something being done a certain way, go ahead and build it. You know, yeah, totally. Some idea for some new way we should, that, we should fund projects. Go ahead. That's, and draw uh, that's kind of what I was getting at before about how, you know, we, we need to learn the lessons that Monero is here to teach in the first place, which is the fact that it it could even be known that there was this honey pot of lots and lots of anonymous money you know like you're you're the 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 lack of privacy about even the existence of this wallet was part of the problem right you know i don't i don't go broadcast how much money i have in my house or whatever right like it's and that's one of the reasons why a foundation would have been the best model to carry out the CCS proposals, because you can document the available assets, you know, separate from the storage of the assets. And you could even store them in multiple different ways at multiple different times. You can keep them moving and all of that. Um, but it, 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 if you want both auditability and you want you know a, a, a fund where people are vetted i mean this was certainly not the way to do it you know i i've loved what the ccs has done but i've never donated to it because it seemed like not the best way to carry this out from the beginning in my mind um i mean a lot of people who have been on the show know like i i do my donations directly you know i and i try to make sure that whatever the resources I'm using to further the the cause, um, they come from a place where nobody knows they exist, and they end up directly in the hands of the person who needs the work done. Um, but like I was saying before, I mean the the security, the threat model of this, even though like I was saying before about like the Windows situation, the real threat model is the individual the most trustworthy people in the entire world if you know you can send them pictures of where their daughter goes to school and they start shaking you know or like somebody who really really believes in a project like this you can really mess with their head if you know where their water supply is and you know the right chemistry to do that like the human factor is always the weakest link and you know the, and the thing is is like it may have nothing to do with the digital security of these people yeah uh you're throwing out some some scary thoughts there but it but it but it's true i do want to uh we're gonna i guess we'll be jumping around right so we're talking about new concepts for what the monero ccs could be but let's let's let, let's talk about the hack a little bit more enter crypto is bringing up a point we shouldn't be accusing anybody at all, but it would be remiss of us not to seriously consider that the C was just stolen by one of the two parties that had access to it. Um, so that's that's the first thing that maybe people are thinking. Was it was it you know Fluffy or Luigi that just simply used the key and stole the funds? Me personally, I think we need to you know uh not assume the worst and give these people the benefit of the doubt given all the the tremendous amount of work that they've put into this open source project fluffy in particular from the early days uh luigi as well um i guess to alaska anon's point we don't even know if there's multiple if there are multiple luigis right but uh assuming these are these are the people we know that they've worked tirelessly on this project on monero itself 
So to not give them the benefit of the doubt and just throw them under the bus, I think it's I think it's disrespectful. Um, I think we need to. I don't think we should be assuming the worst about these people, even though the obvious. You know, you might want to say, well, they had the keys. Uh, that being said, I think there's some investigation that should be done, right? I think. There's already been talk about getting access to the computer that Luigi was using so it can be analyzed. Uh, and then maybe more can be learned from that. But I, I'd also say, too, I mean, the, the the fact that it appears that the person who stole the crypto was kind of noobish about it and sloppy in what they did makes me think, you know, there, there's no way it was one of these two guys that just that just wouldn't make sense unless it's just like the perfect cover up, like, right? Like, um, but my understanding is, and Andres, maybe you could chime in here, but it, it looks, it appears like the person who stole the seed proceeded to likely use Manaruju wallet and use the new um, change feature built into it because of. The way we saw the Monero outputs being broken up on the on the first transaction, uh, yeah. Do you, do you do you want to chime in on that? Am I accurate in saying that? And it seems like odd behavior by somebody who had the ability to get access to this wallet. <laughs> yes, um, I'm lacking the technical capabilities to really analyze like chain analysis of what Justin has done and how much he, the conclusions are, 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 um, are accurate. Uh, by the looks of it, it looks like that. I mean, it could also be someone passing. <laughs> you know, it's just like what you just say. It's like, it could be someone just using the old version of the first version of Monerujo's pocket change. It could be something, someone like, impersonating someone hey. using pocket change, like manually doing like a pocket change translate <laughs> transaction. So it looks like pocket change on this side. It doesn't look, I mean, I'm kind of flattered that like such a technical hacker managed to empty the wallets <laughs> of the, of the core team and then using Monerujo to spend is like super badass advertisement, but it doesn't make much sense. I mean, it doesn't look like a sophisticated, like after after the fact um, behavior. But we will see. I think it's really, really too early to to be able to to analyze properly what happened. And, and in a month, maybe I'll have someone announcing that they had the the money uh, and all of it, and uh, he he was just trying to test if Monero is really. That privacy focus that's it, it cannot be traced in any way <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah okay but let, let's 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 say people i mean and i think seth already tweeted about it that and somebody else did as well i don't remember who uh that yeah even though you can in fear i mean the first version of pocket change diminishes your privacy in some aspects because it created like a specific set amount of um, of change back. That doesn't mean it, it de-anonymizes you. It's changed, it's changed now. It's a random amount between, uh, I, think, I think, none basically, or one and 16. Uh, but this is a very special case when you have, I mean, basically it's like you're trying to follow the money your own money you know what i mean you have the the keys and the, and the addresses on everything that was stolen so you can you, you know all the outputs that are going in through the transactions and it's, it's just a matter of being able to trace it after the fact it's not like someone watching like a third party watching yourself we don't have any access to, of, to all the information that we already have about the about the the original wallet it's just trying to guess which transactions go to whom, which will be the case for most people, you know? Yeah, to, to add on to that, um, I've seen quite a few people, <clears throat> I've seen quite a few people on Twitter saying, oh, Mon Monero apparently isn't all that private. And uh, even a few prominent personalities that seem to kind of make their brand on decontextualized um, statements and, and sort of like just exaggeration about what the reality is. 
So yeah, I mean, the fact that we have the private keys and the view keys for this wallet has enabled some of the tracing that has been possible. Um, but the other thing too is that the the attacker yeah, you're referring to the Chris Black uh, post, right? Yeah, that up. But go ahead. I mean, you know, I'm slightly salty because Black blocked me after pointing out what the law says about a certain. Well, thing. he just seemed to be the ultimate concern troll. That's his whole mo. That's what he yeah. does uh, with any crypto, right? He's always attacking all, all these projects and, and pointing out the weaknesses. That's his his mo. Uh, but he also, you know, with the with the Monero community, I think he's he's used to going to these communities and pointing out these things and everybody going along with it. But I feel like the Monero community is a little bit more intelligent with what's going on. Uh, and here he is trying to concern troll. And it's like Monero or, or, has always been well aware of this issue, right? It's not in denial of this. We talk about it all the time. So it's like for him to be like exposing it like it's new news. It's like it's it's old news, right? We always knew there was this flaw. But go ahead, body. Yeah, I mean, I I like the way that um, who who was it? I can't remember his name right now. Uh, anyways, one of the guys that that did like one of the main reports on the tracing was like these are poisoned outputs because we know exactly what the outputs are. So because of that, you can make statistical inferences about what was the most likely transaction that actually happened. And as Andres pointed out. This this guy was apparently not very sophisticated in their understanding about how these uh, about how outputs and ring signatures work, and if they had been, they might have just done something simple like okay, after they swept all the funds, do a single transaction to dump it to a single wallet, and then from there you're going to lose it in the noise basically. So it didn't it doesn't seem like they're sophisticated in that in that manner. And moreover, these are all tracing methods that were documented years ago in Breaking Monero. So it's like it. Yes, the the problem right now it's a PR kind of thing. People are like, "Oh, well, look, they're they're now the Monero people are tracing Monero," and it's like, uh, I know that this is too much nuance for Twitter, but no, this this is not like this is nothing new. And anyone that knows what they're doing, oh, by the way, we've said for a long time that if you have a higher threat model, right? If you like this hacker, obviously has a higher threat model. If you have a higher threat model, you're gonna need to think about these things. If you're a darknet market vendor selling life saving insulin. <laughs> in Bibles in China, uh, you know, you're, you're going to need to think about these kinds of things because no, Monero isn't perfect, um, which is, you know, again, more of a plug why we need to go to more rings and ultimately um, full membership proofs. But uh, yeah, yeah I just thought that that was important to bring. And just the way Chris Beck plays it, right? It appears the chain analysis psychopaths have figured out how to do. So this, the psychopath is Justin, right? Ernhofer of the Monero community who's been talking about this issue forever. So he, he's, he's not a chain analysis psychopath. He's a contributor to Monero that's been pointing out the flaw all along, which is the, the proper thing to do on a pro in a project like this, right? Not to be in denial of these issues. Um, so to, First of all, to call chain analysis people psychopaths is just idiotic. Uh, it's an issue yeah. we're going to have to deal with. They're not necessarily psychopaths. They're people that are just doing the rational thing, which is using a tool, and they're using it to track and trace transactions if they can. Uh, that's and moreover, just, Justin is because, only using techniques that he helped to document years right, ago. Right. And so so to, the, the idea of crypto isn't to hope that sociopaths don't, don't track and trace. It's to build crypto that can't be tracked and traced. Wait, wait till it. So, exactly. So, exactly. Chris, I mean, it's fun. It's fun to just say, "Hey, Justin went to the dark side." You know, it's it's all fun and good. But we cannot. <laughs> Monero is, is not funded and it's not developing <laughs> in the idea that everybody is going to play along with us and just leave us to be super private and nobody is going to try to trace anything. We shouldn't assume that. So the more that people try to break it, the better. We will find things to fix earlier. And if it's uh, if it's friendly people doing the poking, even better, because we get another shot to fix it between, before the bad, the actual, the true bad guys do it. I mean, that's the way that I take it. So I think it's people take it. It's just like Body says. I mean. One, you cannot you cannot get any nuance on Twitter. That is totally true. Someone just posted yesterday a picture of a Bitcoin a Bitcoin school from Uruguay traveling here to Formosa, saying, "Hey, they're doing great things with Monero," and he got a floor a flood of like maxis saying, "Oh, I guess it's shitcoin season now." Wah, 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 wah. So it's like, what the fuck? No, no, no. people, chill out. 
chill out. And a Monero is not being traced. It's not that, that the Monero community or the Monero people have a switch that you can, okay, when they, start, they steal funds from us, we can just trace Monero and it was all like a lie. No, that does, it doesn't happen like that. You know what's right. funny? Uh, Chris has a XMR support address. So basically, he, he wants to clown Monero about this uh, research uh, of Justin trying to figure out where the money went. And and he even has a XMR support address. So he basically... Yeah, well, he's it, like that with all the... Yeah, yeah. And he could argue, you could argue that he doesn't care because he also has a Bitcoin address there. Yeah, for support yeah. so but, but his conclusion his conclusion is that um, you know this is not good for privacy because uh justin is out there revealing this flaw and notifying exchanges to keep an eye out for this transaction yeah so it, it, in a it is good for privacy because justin is now uh revealing the flaw and bringing it to our attention so now we can improve the monero protocol yes. which we we're already aware of anyway but to to, to to pretend it doesn't exist in an incident like this wouldn't be doesn't make it better for privacy. Um, that the, the flaw is there, whether we want to ignore it or not. Um, you could even argue that he's helping someone uh, that may need this kind of privacy that to know what's the right. dangers that right. they are facing somehow. Yeah, for, the, for, the, for the next hacker, right? Given a given yes, a, 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 how to properly steal Monero. It's you so still easy. have the general so fund. Easy. The Dude. general fund the Wait, Andres, Andres, is Andres, way Andres, bigger. Your yeah. mic is scary fast, and someone uh, and Sunita uh, especially uh, has their ears blown out by it. What hey, Andres? yeah, Andreas, turn your mic. Yeah, down your just... mic is too yeah. loud. Sorry, guys, I had technical difficulties with my laptop, so now yeah, I'm on yeah, my yeah. phone. I was, I was just. Is it a bit better now? Sorry. Yeah, that's, your gain is super loud. Perfect. So much better. So let, let's. Sorry for that. No, let's no. Talk a little. I was being too loud in here. Oh, sorry. Oh. You're worth every. Uh, you're worth every every <laughs> decibel of hearing damage. Bro. You're, you're, you're <laughs> rants are many light years ahead of mine. <laughs> and uh, uh, beats. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. No problem. And we'll be very polite from now on. Some rewind to uh, Alaska on ma ma uh, mentioned uh, about an hour ago. That's uh, the last week I made the uh, presentation of the monitor signer, and people didn't understand why it was necessary to have something like that. Well, oh, this, yeah, is why it's that this is why it's necessary. <laughs> Yeah, what's really hilarious is like he literally did a presentation last week on a way that this could have been completely prevented and it would have been totally impossible for exactly. any hack to take place. Like, and then the very next week we're talking about what do we do? <laughs> and, and 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 you know what's the absolute scary thing that about half a million dollars was was stolen from the wallet, converted into USD, like. That kind of money could change someone's life forever. Yeah, it, it, it just disappeared like <laughs> shit. Yeah, th thir thirty easy thousand. Easy come, easy go, man. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, but probably it, it wasn't easy come. So yeah, so much people donated to that. Uh, like I said on the outside of the show, crypto can can be quite stressful. Yeah, yeah. Um. What Justin put together here, though, is really fascinating. And I guess that that is other news, right? So we know that Justin has uh, resigned from, from Cake uh, and moved on to other projects. Um, it appears this is one this is one of the big things he's working on this uh, moon. What is it? What's it called? Moonstone Stoner Research? Moonstone Research. Um, so that's interesting to see. I'll try to get Justin on this week. To do a Monero talk, to break this all down, to go over what exactly he was able to achieve with "quote unquote" tracing Monero's uh, uh, ring signatures. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It looks like they were able; he was able to go two transactions in, and and obviously this is all probabilistic, right? It's not like there's you know he's able to determine with any certainty, but 
with some probability he's able to kind of pick out the the transaction that would likely have gone to an an exchange for exchanges to be on the lookout for um yeah do you guys have any further comments on this what justin has performed and you know your, your thoughts on it you know it's, i think it's, it's good super interesting Go ahead, and i'm sure he put a, a huge amount of work into it but the easiest way to figure this out is try to figure out who's been to one of those two guys houses for the last three months <laughs> and then figure out if a bunch if one of them just gets like a whole bunch of random shit shipped to their door and you have your answer you know, it's but, like... but the, prob the problem is with posting the uh, IDs of the transactions now is that it's been almost three months. So the e exchanges that possibly would have been able to uh, catch the money that was attacked and stolen, there is no reason or chance, I think, for any exchange to be able to catch that now. Probably in cat the money is in cash right now. So, I mean, certainly maybe, but um, that it, it, that that's kind of the reason why I'm thinking like anybody who has done this, if they've already liquidated all of it within three months, it's pretty much impossible to hide the fact that they've gotten a huge boost in their available income right like this i mean it, it's almost certainly going to be the case if we find out who did this that either it's going to end up being one of the two directly or it's going to be somebody that has like come and gone from their life in their house but then the other plausibilities are you know somebody figured out who is a likely candidate for being one of these two and found a way into the hot wallet or uh, you know, some government agency or mafia type agency is putting pressure on one of these two people directly for reasons that we don't know right now. I mean, that's that's like 99% of anything that could have happened is one of those four things. So, yeah, but if a different person stole the money, they, they don't have to be so much boosted in income, probably. If if I were the one who stole it, I, I'd spend it really slowly, so it's not noticeable. <laughs> so, con comrades, stop helping them. Stop <laughs> helping them, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, with the yeah, hacker, well, please jump up on stage. Please jump up. Yes. On stage. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, tell us your story. Tell us your story. We won't even come after you. It'd be yeah. really interesting to yeah, know well, all this hear what's going on. Yeah, well, and anyone with yeah, a, an, anyone with a minimum IQ point of eighty would do the same, I think. Look, the Monero uh, community has a deep <laughs> sense of respect for red team players. Like I think a lot of us have been involved in pen testing at one point or another. We don't even hate the guy who stole all of this money. It would be yeah. really cool to find out how. Yeah, well, you know, we both <laughs> hate him and not. Rise to Liberty it's, saying, it's, "What is it's... Rise to Liberty saying? What is the biggest takeaway we can look at from this entire situation?" Uh, and Enter Crypto is saying, "I think the biggest takeaway is that we need a better way to fund CCS going forward." Yeah, exactly. I think you know that that's that's what will come out of this, right? It was a tragic event, uh, but we'll use that to our advantage to in two ways. One. Um, to fix the the privacy flaw that Monero has with ring signatures, which we were already aware of, but it, br it brings it even more to light, uh, makes it more of a concern. Obviously, everybody's already focused on that with Seraphis and increasing the ring sizes and then eventually adding full membership proofs, which would make all of this completely irrelevant. But it does, it does add more, I think, momentum towards that. And then the second thing is is fixing how we do funding in the Monero ecosystem. Um, and my my like I said, my take my suggestion is that I think those things just need to happen organically. It's not about um, you know all agreeing on we need to do it this way. It's about trying all different ways and seeing this as an opportunity to offer these different services to the community. For example, Kuno, like I said, exists. Is that the solution? I don't think so, but maybe there's some hybrid there. Um, 
even with XMR Bazaar, we're experimenting with multisig. We've made some, some progress with it. It's actually the same guy who built Kuno, and we're talking about how to add Kuno-like fundraising to XMR Bazaar that would also utilize multisig, but not as easy said as done, because if you're trying to do multisig with all the donors, that's not going to be very practical. Um, I'm sure there's there's other ideas out there. We we talked about the magic the magic Monero fund or whatever. I always forget the name. What is that thing called? The magic fund or the anybody know that? I don't. I don't it know. is magic Monero fund. Magic Monero fund. The magic Monero fund, which is a solution that already exists. So I think maybe a lot of energy maybe will get pushed towards that. People seeing that as a viable thing, and then whatever else anybody comes up with. But I don't think it's about sitting and waiting for uh, core to tell us. You know, this is what we need to do. Uh, just let these solutions organically come to the surface. Andres, one of the solutions that that's popped up is what you guys have done, right, at Minaruju, with how you guys were trying to raise money for some of your features. I think that's yeah. an example of something. Has that caught any traction? Has that gained traction? Yeah, totally. It got more... Um, do I sound okay now? I cannot lower it anymore. Okay. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, Go ahead. It's fine. Uh, yeah, basically everything got funded. It got more traction. The the funding part got more traction than the working part. <laughs> we are way behind schedule with what we promised. But yeah, it worked. But uh, again, and I don't how, think... How does that work? Is it like a Kickstarter where the funds go back if people don't fully fund it? Or it's just... No, no. That's, that's the... Ah, this is so nuanced, everything. Just sorry for my English, but um, this, that's one of the, the important parts of the CCS because it's not only the, the, the technical way that it works. It's, it's also that, in a way, if you're donating to the CCS, you, and, and I think it's good for middle-sized, at least, uh, kind of projects, you know, when many a lot of funds may be, may be raised and you still are perhaps months away from the from the delivery of the thing that you are funding okay so you know and i happen it had happened in in the past that someone proposes something they never complete the task and the funds that were donated to the ccs for that specific um, project got back to another ccs after after a lot of time you know but otherwise that the money would have been lost or even to the general fund you know so Using the CCS, it's a bit of a guarantee. I know it's centralized and it depends on some a few, a few, a few people. But if you're donated to the CCS, you know that the money is not going nowhere, basically. That if you're paying for some guy and the guy just disappeared, the money goes nowhere. And with a, with, a, with, a, um, with a coin like Monero, which is so private in practice, there is not a, like a little detail. That, that, that's something that I, I know that has encouraged many people to donate to the CCS because they see, well, worst case, this doesn't get fulfilled, but something else will, you know, yeah. and it's and it's kind of better by the by the core community. So it's not the same as Monerujo. In Monerujo, you have to trust us. It's just like an around CCS. I mean, we get the money and we are the, the thing that we are doing for transparency, you see, is the same thing that happens with CCS. We have a wallet with a view key that everybody can say, can see how much money got in, but they cannot see how much got out. That's and it's an, and that's the, sorry, but that's the, the key detail that here, I haven't, haven't listened or read anybody talking about this in this specific, specific case, which is something that if Seraphis doesn't break everything and Monero like explodes, is one of the few things, uh, of, the, of the things that are, going to change a lot because with Seraphis you are supposed to have view wallets that you can also see uh, yes. money going out right yes, so right now so right now the CCS let's imagine I, I am in control of the wallet of the CCS and I can put put out all the view we all the view keys that I want and people can monitor all the money coming in I can I can monitor I can create a view only wallet and make it very secure so the money is not at risk and I can check it every day to see how much money got in. But since I cannot see how much money gets out, 
the moment that the wallet is most, most vulnerable is the moment that I will have to send money. So maybe, it's and this is what happened in this case, I'm only noticing the money that is gone three weeks when after you, the fact that it's gone. Yeah. When I have to send send it to someone. Of course, when you have to check the wallets. And yeah, them. and that's the most vulnerable pay, uh, moment of the wallet because the wallet is unlocked and ready to, be, to send funds. That's the moment where anybody could send funds anywhere. So with a view-only wallet with Seraphis that you can also see uh, money going out, that's a good monitor monitoring system because many people can just check it regularly without having access to actually spend funds from that wallet. And if you see something like this, you, you notice it right away.